Grazie mille, thank you for your presence here tonight. We are delighted to uh, open our season of exhibits uh, for our academic year with Mimmo Roselli. Uh, Mimmo is an Italian artist, born in Rome, but raised in Florence, yeah. and a Florentine by adoption, we can say. Yeah. And, um, and also a bit of a New Yorker, because he gets to spend quite a lot of time in New York. Enough time, yes. And he also produces art here. Yeah. And the exhibit that we have the pleasure to uh, open this evening is a site-specific exhibit conceived and produced in New York. New York, yes. Um, before we begin our conversation with Mimo that will include the screening of two short films, I would like to thank a person that is here with us in the audience. It's Professor Angela Churchill. Professor Angela Churchill is right there. And <laughs> let me tell you... Let me tell you just a few things about her, because um, she was pivotal in putting us in contact with Mimmo and in introducing Mimmo art uh, to the Casa and therefore making this exhibit possible. Professor Church is a wonderful artist in her own right, and she's going to have an exhibit at Pauline's Gallery shortly, and we'll let the you know. <coughs> when is it? The Holland Tunnel Gallery in Williamsburg will make sure you find out about Angela's upcoming exhibit. So she's a wonderful artist in her own right, but especially we honor her here tonight for her job as a mentor of artists. For about 30 years, she was at NYU at what is now called the Steiner School for uh, Arts and Art Professions, and she ran a fantastic program of art and studio art that had students both in New York and Venice. Students spent two summers in Venice, like bookends, and one academic year in New York. And under her leadership, American students were exposed to wonderful contemporary Italian artists and to a variety of different kinds of art forms that went from a sculpting to video art to installations uh, to painting. And really, we were lucky enough to enjoy the, the, the fruit of Professor Churchill's hard work, thanks to the exhibits that she curated for Casa Italiana, where we got to sample some of the great work produced by her student artists. And again, it's thanks to Angela that we had this connection with Mimmo. So for this and all the other great things that she did for art and for her students that are now wonderful artists, I think she deserves our gratitude and our applause. Thank you, Angela. <laughs> and now, to Mimmo. Um, the first film we're going to see is a short film with an interview to you at the uh, Venice Biennale of uh, 2013, mm -hmm. in which you talk about some of your work that is also similar to the work that we have uh, mm -hmm. upstairs. Uh, tell us how. Um, you got involved in the Biennale, and who invited you uh, for this specific uh, project? Well, uh, it was uh, um, invited me, an uh, Austrian curator that uh, I was working with uh, during several years, and uh, he invited uh, to Padiglione Venezia, Giardini della Biennale, especially uh, to, to make uh, this is a sculpture installation that I do with wires. And uh, so I presented there two different uh, sculpture installations, one inside and outside, uh, and uh, a little painting uh, similar to you can see upstairs. Uh, Mimo, before we proceed and, and uh, um, watch the second uh, film, I just wanted to ask you something about the, the site-specific installation that we created for our garden here. And of course, we see the, the common element that are these ropes. Um, but I wanted to know what uh, specific, in, in this case, it was very clear, and you explained it very well in the interview, this idea that the space of art, thanks to the ropes, sort of 
uh, transborder, goes beyond the borders of what is considered normally uh, the specific uh, art space into the world. But then you said something about the solidity of the world. These lines are, might be thin compared to anything else, but they're straight lines, they're strong. Um, has your perspective slightly changed in the way in which you use the ropes? Can you use your ropes also to convey other messages? Or these are basically the two major uh, ideas? Well, uh, first of all, as I said also in the video, uh, these lines uh, online that uh, cut space. And th this is very important for me, this uh, concept, because uh, uh, cut space is uh, like a cut a canvas. Uh, it's uh, the meaning of uh, our personal passage in the life that make a mark, make something that uh, each of us mark his life for himself and for the other people. This is the first thing. Then, uh, speaking about uh, this specific that I made in uh, this space, uh, the title is uh, From Here to Here. Uh, and uh, it's another, uh, so the, the lines go uh, through the, the place and come back in the same place where part. Uh, this is the uh, first time that I do this kind of uh, work uh, because uh, uh, all the all this work are different but uh, sometimes I repeat such work in different places that take another significance. Uh, but this is really the first time that I do this kind of work from here to here. And uh, uh, Beyond the other concepts that, uh, that uh, I described there in the, in the video, uh, in this case uh, I want to uh, significant that uh, it's very important uh, to stay where you are. So for this reason, from here to here. Uh, sometimes uh, we are looking too much to the future, and me too. <laughs> <laughs> My, my wife says all the time, well, stay where you are. So I was thinking about that. That is a really very important concept because uh, sometimes we, we escape for, from our responsibilities because we are not in the place where we are. So in this case, the ropes are also the idea of including and yeah. creating a space yes. where you can be with yeah, also sure, with yourself sure. and yeah, but uh, the, uh, generally the, the my rope comes from from one inside and go to the another inside. In this case, come back to the same to the same uh, mm, departure to the same point of departure. Yeah, yeah. So it's interesting that you're using the same medium that are the ropes, yeah. but the message is changing. Yes, it's changed. From, from one place to the other, from one mm -hmm. side to the other. Sure. And talking about stay where you are, your, your wife's advice, <laughs> you seem not able to stay where you are. Because we say you are, you're based in Florence, you spend quite some time in, in New York, but also there is another part of the world where you spend quite a lot of time. And that brings us to our next uh, film. Yeah. Um, that is uh, Santa Rosa in Bolivia. Yes. Uh, it's a very interesting and important part of your life and of your career right now. Uh, and before I say anything, I think we should see the film. And then we're going to talk about how it all started, okay. how you got involved with yeah. uh, Santa Rosa, and <coughs> how things happened there. So I think we should see the second film. It's about uh, 18 minutes. Yeah. And we have to say, no, Julian, wait a second. Just one second. Uh, the director was supposed to be here, he couldn't come, he apologizes and he sends his greetings. And we just also have to mention that uh, these uh, 18 minutes that we are seeing tonight are only a part of a uh, longer project that is going to last about 70 minutes mm -hmm. once it's uh, completed. So we, we watch it, this is sort of a rough cut, a, a preview of what the film is going to be like. And now we can roll it. So Mimo, um, 
just a, a few questions about, about this film, about your experience in Santa Rosa. First of all, I don't know how many of you caught the fact that the people with whom Mimo uh, uh, is working are the Guarani. Um, many of you probably don't remember, but in the movie The Mission with Jeremy Irons, that talks about the first Jesuit missions uh, in this part of the world. Uh, the, the early Jesuit missioners were working exactly with the uh, members of these, of these people. Um, and the first question for you is, you were brought to Santa Rosa the first time by your other life, by your other uh, profession, as we can say. And maybe at this time, it, it's time to, to talk briefly about it. Mimo is a physician, and uh, he practiced medicine for quite a long time. And at a certain point, he had to make a choice. Um, but it's basically through medicine that you arrived in this uh, place in Bolivia, correct? Yes. Uh, uh, in uh, 1984, uh, during the night, I was speaking with a Franciscan monk in the House of Friends. Uh, and, uh, we speak a lot about uh, his experience. Uh, uh, she was attending uh, the first uh, aid to to this uh, population, uh, first uh, medical aid to this population, and uh, he invited me to go and to visit him and see. And uh, it was August when we spoke. In uh, January '85, I made the first travel to Bolivia. Then I, I was traveling each year since that period and uh, staying there two, three months a year. And uh, well, they asked me after this first month uh, to find uh, some professor that was uh, interesting to do uh, research in the field of infectious disease and to do some uh, some work in uh, uh, public health. And so I was speaking and uh, begin, and then this group is working uh, since that, uh, that uh, uh, age, uh, and now are more than 30 years that we are going every year. But I remember that uh, just in the first uh, approach that I had with this uh, Franciscan monk, I was still uh, working in a hospital in Italy, uh, making both professions that I, as uh, Stefano said, I, I decided at the end to, to go, uh, to have all my time in, in art. Uh, well, I, I told to this Franciscan monk that uh, what I saw in, uh, in this uh, field uh, with the Guarani people, that the culture was uh, completely inattended. And we came uh, to, to speak about that. There, there was a long time uh, to, to make born uh, this, uh, this school of uh, art and music uh, that was born in 2007 and uh, it's located in, tre in three uh, Indian villages. Uh, it's a, a basic school, and now we want, uh, in one of these villages, that is a Santa Rosa that you saw before, to put the high school of, of art and music. So the festival was uh, the idea to encourage the people, uh, mostly the, the authorities, to to go on with this uh, with this project. So the idea is that you go there as a physician with a group of uh, specialists in infectious diseases. After they, they came, yeah. yeah. And you still go there also in that capacity. Yeah. So I mean, it's the only place where you still yes, practice uh, active medicine. Yes. But at the same time, when you go there and you see that there is no no art and no culture available to these people, and that's when you have the idea of starting the festival and the school that were born. Uh, no, we, we became with the school uh, in 2007, yes. the basic school, and I made uh, this year the festival to push the authorities to, to go on with the project and put 
the high school of art and music uh, in this place, Santa Rosa, that has a space where to, to do that. The idea, the project is that uh, uh, we want to have uh, pupils uh, living there, uh, not only from Santa Rosa, from all Bolivia, and sometimes uh, other, other part of, uh, of South America, uh, where there will be a professor paid uh, by the government uh, as a stable professor, and uh, as uh, we show in this festival, inviting artists and musicians uh, for, for the time that uh, they can come to have a stage with the pupils of different kind of arts. So they would have a, a, a stable faculty, and then they would have uh, visiting professors, basically. Yeah. And already from all over the world, you have invited mm -hmm. people in different forms of art to yeah. share their experience with, yeah. with these students. Um, I think Angela and this experience that Mimo told me about was what got me really interested mm -hmm. in his art and in his work. How does that experience in Bolivia uh, inspire you as an artist? What you as an artist have learned from them? Well, the, the match that is uh, between my art that uh, I was practicing art uh, since I was a child, and Bolivia was uh, uh, how the, um, the experience of these people that uh, is a very poor people, but very di di dignified. Dignified, really very dignified. So they don't uh, show how poor they are. And, uh, and this is uh, that matches mm, very much with the, my idea of working in, in art, where, as you saw upstairs, uh, the elements are very poor. They are lines, they are ground, and, uh, but uh, these elements are, for my opinion, uh, it could be not the opinion of, the, of, of, other, of other people, but uh, I think that uh, with the less we can do big things, with the pure things we can uh, approach the big elements of our life. It's a great lesson <laughs> to learn. <laughs> um, do we have other questions for Mimo from the, from the audience? Anything you might want to ask him about either what you've seen, what, you, what he said, or about the exhibit upstairs? Is the Franciscan monk still alive? Are you still in contact? Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, he is there most of the time? Or uh, well, no, no he, he lives in Bolivia. I see. And uh, he managed the school when I, I'm not there. And uh, we are we make a lot of efforts uh, to to have us found to to go on with the project because uh, the the government uh, help us uh, with uh, paying uh, the professors, but uh, there's a lot of uh, cost uh, for the school because uh, the, pu the, the the pupils don't pay nothing in the school, so everything is uh, donate. So. For this reason, uh, we are all the time searching <laughs> found in every part of the world uh, to, to go on with the project. And where does most of the fund come from? From Italy, from the US, from where, where are your, where well, is the donor some, base? Some funds come from Italy, uh, mm, mostly comes from a, a musical foundation that is from Switzerland. and. Uh, we are going to, to have more, I hope, <laughs> in the future, to find more, because uh, now the foundation, the Swiss foundation, it's a long time that uh, support us. I don't know how much. For how so longer they will. Yeah, yeah. And it's a, a music foundation, because one originally also under, under the Jesuits with the Guarani, there was very important in musical education, early music, all the Renaissance, Baroque music. Uh, yeah, it was a... a an Italian uh, musician, it was a Domenico Zipoli, Zipoli that uh, when he was at the top of his uh, career as a musician, decided to 
go to South America and uh, to live as a Jesuit there. And he was attending, uh, he was continuing to compose music. Uh, and uh, But uh, his assistants were this population, the Guarani population, that was, were working with him. And they brought music, music uh, that uh, we found uh, in a big box uh, when uh, uh, was restored one of these reduction uh, in Bolivia. They found a, a very big box with more than f 5,000 uh, papers of music, uh, some signed by Domenico Zipoli and some uh, anonymous Guarani. So, uh, in uh, 19, uh, in 2014, uh, in this uh, international festival, uh, Renaissance and uh, Baroque music that uh, every two years uh, uh, they are played in Bolivia, uh, our school, a musician, our choral and orchestra, uh, our school played uh, music wrote by Guarani people. For was the first time in the world that uh, had this event. Do we have other questions from you? Yes, lady. Um, you know, I'm wondering, uh, it was an art and music school before you arrived? No. Oh, you started the school? We started, yeah. And did your, was your art influenced by their art, and was their art influenced by the art of the school? Well, I have to say that uh, in the beginning we tried to uh, play with the uh, uh, music that they spontaneous uh, do and uh, with uh, classical music for for the part of the music and for the part of uh, visual art uh, till uh, one years ago we had only uh, work uh, artisanal work so textile uh, vases uh, and so on and now we are approaching uh, much more in going deep deeper into the concept of uh, visual art. Yes, gentlemen. Uh, also she. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? How do you choose the students who get accepted? No, we, we, we didn't choose. In the basic school, uh, we accept every kind of uh, pupil that want to, to stay with, uh, with us. And uh, f this problem we will have uh, when uh, we really open the high school then I think uh, we have to, to make it a choice. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, I just want to know in what way did your Italian roots affect your work? No, I didn't. Vuoi sapere in che modo le tue radici italiane hanno influenzato il tuo lavoro? Le mie radici italiane hanno influenzato il mio lavoro? Sì. No, non capisco. No, no, no. I'll try to rephrase it because it was also a question that no, no, it, it was also a, a question that I had in mind because Mimo is from Florence, okay? And it's the cradle of Renaissance art, yeah. but it's a very hard city in general for contemporary art. Yeah. The question of the young lady was, is being Italian reflected some, yeah. somehow in, in the art you produce or do we already live in such a globalized world that our own uh, national origins don't matter anymore? But, uh, and then the question yeah. is, is particularly interesting for somebody from Florence, that of course, it's the most beautiful city ever, yeah. great architecture, great art, but it's a bit overwhelming and it might even somehow castrate the creativity of artists because they yeah. feel that they are <laughs> surrounded by it. Well, sure that living uh, in a city uh, like Florence that uh, is so big, powerful in, uh, in art, uh, in art, old art, Renaissance art, but not only, also Middle Age art and so on, and architecture is uh, extremely uh, hard to escape, and to not only escape, because uh, you have to confront also with this, this kind of art. So uh, I think uh, the, the only way is to love art. If you love art, uh, you are not uh, really uh, compressed by art, uh, however it could be. So uh, I was uh, beginning to visit museum, uh, 
and there was uh, I was thinking about how Renaissance art uh, has give uh, to to me such as uh, a complete scene, but also uh, something focused in uh, different uh, using uh, colors. Uh, how the uh, if you you know that uh, I think you know better than me that when you see something uh, uh, represented, uh, you s you see the global and you see also the the details. And uh, I was uh, beginning to look at the details and uh, going in this way appears my first works, absurd works. <laughs> By looking at the details yes. of the great yeah. Renaissance artists. And then I, I come back to, to figurative and uh, after that definitively I was in absurd. But there is this research that is yeah, going yeah. back and forth from yeah. the global perception yeah. to the detail yeah. and for you from figurative to abstract, yeah. basically. Other questions? Was, was uh, enough? Or I think you're very <laughs> profound. <laughs> yes. Well, when I was feeling, when, as soon as I heard he was a physician, mm -hmm. earlier, there were these circulatory systems in our body, and then there was uh, acupuncture points, and and that these ropes are like connecting things too. But maybe there's some connection there. And even when uh, many years ago, Christo did The Gates, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was interviewed in the film, The Gates, and I talked about how it looked like a circulatory system because they were all kind of reddish going around. If there was any connection with his art. Sì, la domanda è sul collegamento possibile quando la medicina e le tue opere, dove ci sono queste funi che in qualche modo sono un sistema circolatorio, no? E anche l'installazione che aveva fatto questo con i Gates, e lui in un film su questo aveva fatto questo paragone, appunto anche lì creavano un sistema a Central Park. Well, we are not separate box we are in our life uh, we we share our different uh, uh, point of view in a, in a one thing so sure that uh, uh, my practice in medicine that was uh, around 10 years uh, influenced me uh, as uh, my Practicing medicine was influenced by art. I remember that when I was attending the, the university and there was, uh, uh, I was in an examination, the professor asked me about something uh, and I, I exposed this, uh, this something in a way that the professor was astonished. And uh, he asked me about, uh, are you an artist? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I told him that uh, I'm very interested in art. Uh, and he said to me, well, your creativity will help you very much making art, making doctor, medicine. So there are something that uh, there is an exchange. And when I decided to dedicate myself only to art, uh, it was not because I was boring about medicine, but because I couldn't uh, apply in a good way both things. So my attraction to the art was uh, most in <laughs> medicine. And so in 1991, I, I stopped with medicine to dedicate me only to the art. And what you say about uh, the lines and the circulation, well, uh, if, you, if you study the, the body circulation, you see that the connection that you have uh, in the body by vessels uh, are so complicated uh, that uh, when I do this work, I reduce a lot about that. <laughs> <laughs> you simplify, but yeah. there is a connection. Yes, sir. I think there's a Renaissance painter, Cosimo Roselli. Re, uh, 
Uh, I think it's Rosselli with double, double S. S. Double S. It's a I different last name. Yes. I think I think it's a double S. It's uh, no connection. <laughs> yes. What do you mean with contrast? Well, uh, between the ropes, the very strong, the tension, the... Um, and and why, you th why you think there is a contrast? Uh, why you think there is a contrast? I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> There's well, no contrast, from, from my opinion. Very organic looking and very... Um, not, not very definite, like yeah, kind yeah. of Yeah, yeah. But I ask you, yeah. where you think uh, they are going? This rope that's going into the earth. After where? You, what do you see about that? Well, you you know you know really what you know really what uh, they do after going inside something. Are they tied underground? Yes, you you see that my rope comes from somewhere that you don't know, and go in inside somewhere that uh, you don't know where they are going so i think that uh, this is a big relationship between this you call contrast there is a big relationship between what i do in this way that uh, appears so strong but uh, you don't really know from where and to where gone with my with the colors Yeah. Your vision yeah. is to not know where it's coming from and where it's going. Yeah. And so how does that relate to the watercolors? Yes, because you say that uh, uh, there is a something that is uh, in contrast with, uh, with this uh, that uh, apparently is a very big contrast uh, because uh, these uh, ropes are strength, uh, are tense, uh, are very define it. And uh, the aquarelle is a more organic, uh, more undefined, but also if you look at the watercolors, so there are some also lines uh, very strong and very... But uh, the idea uh, mostly is about what I said before, that uh, my lines come also in the, in the canvas. They come from behind, and go, you don't know. So what you don't know can be this organic situation. Well, thank you very much. I think that from the questions of our audience, mm -hmm. we have a, a clear sense of how much they appreciated uh, your experience, your art. And we have about another 15 minutes to go upstairs, have a uh, one last glass of Prosecco and enjoy uh, Mimo's works after we have talked about it with him. And again, thank you very much to Angela Churchill and to Mimo Roselli. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.